now that we've cut our 5 16 and quarter inch mortises in both the front legs and the rear legs, I want to focus on the front legs for a minute. I got my smoother out because I'm going to take a couple passes and clean up all four sides here. After that, we're going to have to work on some tapers. We've got a taper on the front, and then we have a little taper here on the bottom. So, just like before, I'm going to take my smoother. I'm going to, before I use that though, I'm going to read the direction and the grain. So, for instance, on this piece here, the grain is running uphill like this. So, I'm going to plane in this direction. I got it set for a nice light cut. flip it over because most likely the direction on the other side will be in the opposite direction when I flip it and in the correct direction the plane right now. Okay, one more side. Now, if you don't feel like uh, planing this, that's okay, you can sand it. Um, but for random orbital sander, you just have to be careful that when you're going over, especially where your mortises are, that you don't create a round over effect. So you can either just be careful with that or hand planes are great or just some sanding blocks would be perfect too. And we're actually going to hit this with sanding blocks in a little bit but this is pretty good for right now. So let me do the other leg and then we'll set these guys up to do our tapers. We have two tapers to set up for the front legs. So on the top of the front leg, we have a taper that's three inches long and an eighth of an inch all around. And that's on all four sides. On the bottom of the leg, we have a taper that's two inches long and sixteenth of an inch or a proud sixteenth of an inch all the way around on four sides. So let's go work on the front one and then we'll work on the back. Okay, the front taper up here is going to be down three inches. And then we'll mark that on all four sides. The next thing we need to do is we need to set this at an eighth of an inch. and draw an eighth of an inch all around on all four sides. And while we're here, let's draw the taper on the bottom. This taper is going to be two inches long. And it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch in. Nothing big, but just a little bit. So I'm going to make this a uh, Take my square and set that to sixteenth of an inch and do the same thing and draw it around on all four sides. I'm going to start by removing material on this face. And got a little block plane here. It's set for a, a thicker cut. So in order to start the taper, I'm going to start moving material 
in the front and then work my way back. I'm constantly looking and checking the lines, seeing how close I am. Now I'm using a rabbiting block plane and I'm using that because the blade's full width and it's wide enough to get this entire piece here at one, one stroke. Okay, I'm a little heavy on the left side. Let's focus on the right a little bit. I'm going to switch over to the smoothing plane. Okay, uh, I'm right on the line back here, and I just made that line disappear. So one face is done, let's flip it over and do the other faces. Okay, two faces done, two more to go. Okay, we finished the tapers on the front leg and they look great. I'm just gonna take a couple of moments with uh, some sandpaper to clean them up real quick. And to round over that transition a little bit more. Okay, that's on the top, we'll do the bottom too. Now here, I got to make sure I stay away. Um, right now, I'm working on the uh, bottom where the mortise for the lower rail is. I got to make sure I don't get close to that when I'm sanding. The next thing I want to do while I have the front leg here is I want to round over the edges. For a lot of the chair, we'll just use a router to do this with a round over bit and then we'll clean it up with some sandpaper. But because of the way the ankles are here, I can't take a router bit and just do this work. So instead I'm going to grab a block plane set on a very fine cut and I'm gonna start cutting chamfers. First building at 45 degrees and then moving on like 25 degrees or so on each side creating a three-faceted surface and then with a little bit of sandpaper I'll be able to round that over. So let's get to it. I was just rounding over the um, face of a mortise on it, one of the faces with a mortise on it, and I just wanted to point out real quick that you need to make sure you don't get too close, that you stay far enough away that um, you're not going to round over into material where the rail and the face of the leg meet. After I do a little bit of sanding, I just feel all along the length of the leg to make sure everything feels the same. So I have the bottom of the leg here, and since these are legs, they're going to move around. So I got my block plane. I'm just going to chamfer around the bottom edges. I want to break these out and then sand them. Okay, I got a nice chamfer on uh, all four sides. So what I'm gonna do now is just take the chamfer, round it over with my sanding block. 
and then the round over the sharp corners here on the edges. So I have the top of the leg right now and where the arm comes into the top of the leg, we round this over to create a shadow line. So I'm going to come in uh, about an eighth of an inch on the front here and then maybe about the same amount on the top. Okay, I got my lines here on the top and pencil and then here on the sides as well. So I'm just going to take my block plane and start chamfering back to that. Grab a couple of sw uh, swipes at a lower angle. And then I'll try to round it a little bit. Okay, now I have the rounding started. I'll come in with my sanding paper and sand and round this off. Okay, and with these rounded over with the sandpaper, we've got a night round over these edges too. They're sharp right now. When I'm doing this, I'm also making sure to stay away from this flat surface right here, because this is the surface where the arm's going to meet the top of the leg, and that needs to stay flat. We used a lot of sandpaper on this, and in order, and I used a smoothing plane to prep the surface for finish. Um, a lot of other parts of the chair are going to be using sandpaper too, so I'm going to take my sanding block right now, and with nice even strokes so that I don't take this piece out of square or flatness, I'm going to just lightly go over the surface and sand it. Now there's a different look between something that's been sanded and something that's been planed when you put finish on it. So I want to make sure that all the surfaces here have been sanded. All right, this front leg's done. I'm gonna set it onto my table in the back that has that nice rubbery surface on it and set it aside and not touch it until I'm ready to dry fit these guys and glue up the front of the chair. Well, it's time to do the final surface prep on the rear legs as well. I have this leg clamped down and I want to plane in this direction for the top because the grain direction on the leg is coming up like this. So I'm going to make a couple passes here with my plane. I've already done a lot of surface prep previously and uh, get the other side as well. Make sure everything's nice and square. I flipped the leg around. You guys could have attacked it in the same direction as it was being clamped already, just moved the clamps, but I needed to face the camera. So I have a spoke shape here, and I'm just going to very lightly go down the surface here. I'm making sure to stay away from where the flat part of the uh, rail would be. I'm just moving my way down, making sure I keep a nice and smooth surface. Okay, that feels pretty good. Uh, I'm going to come back. I'm actually going to hit it with some 150 grit over here and I'll move to a 220. It just feels like it may be a little rough. Okay. 
I'm just gonna move my clamp temporarily up to the front and do the same back here. Okay, that feels really good. That's one side done. Uh, now we gotta deal with the other sides. I'm gonna clamp it. And the next slide I wanna deal with is this side right here, which is where the rear apron goes. We need to make sure that these two faces are square to each other. I've got the rear leg on top of the planing board right now. And I have a piece of quarter inch MDF. And basically what I did was I put the leg down on the board and then I moved the quarter inch PDF back, MDF I mean, until it made contact with the back of the leg. So I know I'm supporting it back here as well. And that it's not changing the elevation of the leg up front. So I'm just gonna make a couple of quick passes here. I wanna check for square. Just wanna make sure that we're good here. Um, a good way of doing this is to take the piece and put it up against the light and see if any light comes through. Yeah, I think I'm off by just a little bit. I'm, I'm heavy on this left side. Okay, once you make a couple passes on this side and you make sure everything's still square, then you can move on to the back here. Okay, I turned the, the leg around, the top of the leg facing out, I clamped it down towards the end of the planing board, and I'm gonna go downhill with my smoothing plane. I'm gonna see if it's flat or not. Perfect. I want to get the outside edge now. It looks like the grain's going this direction up. At least back here, over here, the grain's coming down. It's because the piece is coming down as well. So I'm going to turn the piece around and plane in this direction. Okay, there's a curve here and I can't really follow it with the smoothing plane, so I gotta move to something else. Let's try the little block plane here. Now out here, I'm not really worrying about everything staying square or not. I just wanna make sure I get a nice smooth surface. I grabbed another piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood and I put it behind the other half inch sheet that we have here for our planing board and a little piece of MDF and I just put it down until it starts to lift up the uh, back of the leg and now I'm supporting it across its entire length. So I'm going to take a spoke shave and just clean up the spot right here. The spoke shave is set up to cut a little bit too heavy right now. I'm going to back it out. Okay, so now the spoke shave is set so it won't cut anything, which is fine. I'm going to grab my little plane hammer. There. Just slowly advance the blade. Okay, not enough. There we go.
nice and smooth surface. Okay, I turn the leg around and I have the offcut from the top supporting it over here. And I have a different spoke shape. This is my uh, flat bottom spoke shape and this is my curved bottom spoke shape. And I'm gonna need that to do this inside edge right here, or curve right here. That feels really good. Um, this, this curved sole is really great for getting these inside curves because right? it can just ride the curve, whereas the flat sole, even though it's a very short sole, um, it's not able to get a curve like this. In order to do the other side, I turn it around and I need to come down the hill. So I got my flat bottom spoke shape here, I've got it clamped up in the front, and here we go. Okay, that looks great. I just kind of feathered it in to where the two would meet, where this first, uh, where I plane first, and I plane into this other side, and I kind of feather the two of them in. I don't want to get any tear out anywhere, so I just want to kind of get real close to it, touch it, and then come up. So that gives us four sides of this leg that are nice and smooth and ready for finish. Except, just like before, we need to sand them and also we need to round over these edges. So let's do that now. I want to start to work on rounding over the edges on this leg. However, before I start, I need to get a couple of quick reference points. And that mainly is up here in the top. So I have my crest rail here in my hand and I have a slip tenon on one side. Um, and to help myself, I'm just going to very, very lightly in pencil go around and just draw where the outline is in the front here. And the same thing in the back. Now it's very faint because I want to be able to just sand it off, but you can see that I drew a faint line on both sides and pencil showing where the edge of the crest rail is. Okay, we marked out we marked out where the crest rail is going to be entering into the rear leg, and that's going to help us on this next step when we round over the edges on the rear leg. So just like on the front legs, we'll take the block plane, run it across the length of the leg, um, doing a 45 degree and then a two lower angles to help create a couple of different facets that will then round over with our sandpaper block. However, as we get higher up into the leg, we can't have as much of a round over on the inside here. The outside's fine, but the inside we can't have because we want to make sure that when the crest rail attaches or where it meets the rear leg, that it's flat and solid here and we're not rounding over um, so there's wood to wood contact. Let's get to it. To help, I'm going to start with this inside face first, then we'll work our way around. And to help myself out, what I'm going to do is work, you know, up until just after the arm, about here, and that's when I'll start. I'll work this part separate. So we'll start here first. You'll see I'm slowly taking longer and longer strokes. And I think I got a pretty good amount of wood for the first facet, so let's work on the next ones. And you'll see I have my blade skewed. And that's so that as I go down the curve, I have less and less of the sole there. As I have less of the sole, I can continue to remove material on that curve. If it was a flatter sole, my blade wouldn't reach between the, the points here. 
Okay, that feels pretty good. Now I'm going to come down here and deal with this section. So once again, we want to make sure we stay away from the pencil mark that's here. So I'm actually going to tilt the piece a little bit, hold it with my hand, and then start to work down. This way I can see where the pencil line is, which is um, over here. Okay, I'm going to round over a little bit. All right, good. So I stayed away. I've got a nice little bit of a chamfer and, some, and a round over here. And let's grab the sanding block here of some 220 grit paper and we'll start working. I'm going to work here since I'm looking at it first. And you'll see that I'm rounding the, the sanding block over. And that helps me create the round over. Okay, so that's really good up here. It's a nice round over. It's smooth and it still really leaves us with enough wood um, that well, they have, we'll have a nice connection there without any possible uh, loss of with the wood connection with the shoulders. And we'll just move all the way back. So basically we're looking to do the same thing here. We have this. I'm going to grab a spoke shave. This is the flat bottom spoke shave. That should be just fine. I'm going to help myself by clamping down one of the ends. This way it won't move as much. Whatever is best for you to hold this piece of wood and be able to get a good cut on it works. So I'm just very carefully moving material up here and as I do it I'm checking where my, my pencil line was. Okay, I want to try a test fit here. And it looks great. We have a really solid connection. I have it rounded over into where the crest rail meets the leg in the front or here in the back. So really good. We just have that, that dark line there is the pencil line. Let me get rid of that. I'm just going to take some 220 grit paper and just lightly go over this. Okay, I got rid of the pencil line. Let's take a look. We got a really nice snug fit in the front. And we've rounded over, but we have not gone into where the cheek of the crest rail and the leg meet. And we have another really great connection back here. I have a really good curve here in the back. And uh, I'm basically just going to use my spoke shave to start taking material away. Just gonna use the block plane to get uh, the small facets going. After you've rounded everything over, if you haven't done so already, grab your 220 grit block and just uh, sand on these surfaces here for the edges. It's going to make a nice stroke, making sure to do one solid stroke all the way across. I don't want to bring this out of square any.
we're going to chamfer the bottom real quick and once we chamfer the bottom we're going to head up to the top and round this guy over. You'll see that I'm doing a shearing cut not a straight cut. The shearing cut is less prone to tear out. Take some sandpaper and round this over. That looks pretty good to me. Nice and even all the way around. I got my leg clamped up in the vise. I have some leather wrapped around it to help protect it, especially since we've done so much work to it to get it ready for finish, or gluing up and then finishing. But um, here's my other leg, and on this leg I've already rounded over the top. And that's what we're going to do here on this leg. So the first thing I did was I took a quarter and I took the quarter and I lined the top of it to the top of the leg and the middle of the side of it to the side of the leg and then drew a quarter round circle onto all the faces. And that's just to help for me visualize where I'm going to be trying to remove material. So I have my finished piece here, which I did earlier. I'm going to use that for my reference visually for this new one because I want them to match as closely as possible. So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is come in with my block plane and just start removing some material on these edges up here. And I'm removing material matching where the two pencil lines intersect trying to create that, that same shape. I'm just chamfering the top a little bit to help when I've hit it the first time with my rasp, it's going to be very, it may cause some blow. I'm just trying to prevent the blowout. So I got my Nicholson 50 here and um, so the first thing you want to do is make sure you go in the right direction. So if I come up like this, I'm, I'm going with the teeth if I come and the grain. Here I'm going with the teeth too, but I'm going against the direction of the grain. I'm going to cause a lot of damage and a lot of tear out. So you want to make sure you're going with the direction of the grain. The big thing I like to do is whatever I do on one side, I come over and do on the other. The goal here is to round over this entire top so there's nothing flat anymore surface wise. start working from the other side as well. I need to match the back to the front. And once in a while I can just come and visually check as well as feel what this piece looks like, what this piece is like, and then what this piece is like. So I got more of a round on the back than I do, uh, I, on the finished piece than I do on this one. So I'm going to round this over a little more. turn it around and take a look from the back. Got some 150 grit paper here. 
I'm going to start working this with the 150 grit paper. And just like with the rasps, I'm not just focusing on one spot, I'm moving the piece as well, rounding at the same time, as well as trying to work on two uh, a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other. I have both legs now clamped up in the vise, and you can see that the rounding over on the right rear leg is more dramatic than the rounding over on the left rear leg. And that's okay. I have them here now because what I'm going to do is get this one more closely matched this one. And I'm going to start with the 150 grit because the 150 grit is going to remove probably more than enough material for me to get to this shape. And I'll come back in with some 220 on both of them and then the 320. I have some loose 220 here. I'm just going to start sanding around. Following the shape that I made it to 150 and the rasps. All right, we got two really good looking legs. I'm happy with the shape on the top up here. It's nice and smooth all around. They both look pretty similar to each other, which is great. The plugs look fantastic. Everything's nice and smooth. They're ready to be put down onto my little table with the rubber mat on top of it. And to sit there until it's time to do some dry fitting and some gluing. Mm -hmm.